Hello world, it is Thursday, December 24th, Christmas Eve. Uh, don't forget our uh, Christmas Eve Lessons and Carols video will be premiering on our Facebook page at 7 p.m. tonight. And premiering means that you'll be able to watch it as if it were a live stream broadcast. So you'll be able to comment on it as it plays and see who else is watching along with you um, and say hello to them, wish them Merry Christmas. Um, and if you have a candle at home, have it with you because there will be a singing of Silent Night at the end. Um, today's kind of an overcast day, starting out still kind of windy and temperature significantly colder than yesterday. So if you get outside today, make sure you bundle up a little bit, protect yourself from that cold. The devotion today is entitled Missing, and it's written by Mary Ludy. And Mary bases the devotion upon Luke chapter 2, verse 12, New Revised Standard Version. There will be a sign for you, a child lying in a manger. And Mary writes, We know all we know about the first Christmas Eve from a few gospel stories, all written decades later, all different in detail. They have this in common, though. No, man, no animals are mentioned at Jesus' birth. No lowing cattle, no braying donkey, no uh, stamping sheep, no droop-eyed dromedaries parked outside. Which is why when it comes to Christmas, imagination is more reliable than holy writ. Christians know what to do with the, with the bare bones of a good story. Add flesh. No animals? But there's a manger, so there must have been animals. The evangelists probably just forgot. Surely God wants this corrected. Henceforth, then, let us sing about the donkey in the corner stall. Paint lovable lambkins into the scene. Arrange cattle and crushes where they belong. And while we're at it, throw in Godzilla and a cat. Thus have animals become gospel. It wouldn't be Christmas without them. I once got a little card showing little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. An ox muzzles at it, stink-eyeing the babe, as if to say, you're cute, little boy, but you're lying in my dinner. All guy moralized. There it is on a Christmas card. Humans monopolizing all the space, making life hard for every animal but us. But I also felt glad. Glad the ox was there. Glad that we humans, so self-centered most of the time, noticed for once that a vital part was missing and rushed to paint, write, and sing it back in. Glad, too, more than I can say, that tonight is born for the one in whose bright realm no one is ever missing, no creature great or small left out of love. And Mary's prayer. Newborn child, give us imagination to see who's missing and bring them right back in. Amen. A couple of things came to mind as I was reading this. One of them is kind of a, a stickler. Having lived on a farm, I know the difference between straw and hay. Straw is used for bedding and is inedible. Well, I guess you could eat it, but it's um, has very low nutritional value. It's just used for bedding. Hay, however, is um, grasses that are cut while still green and then baled or piled or whatever. Um, but because they're cut while they're still green, they have nutritional value. But they get moldy when they get wet. So they're not good for bedding. Hay is only good for eating. Um, so it's always kind of funny when um, oh, there's another the Bible text where it talks about um, um, the animals lying down together. Um, I think it's from, is that from Isaiah? I don't remember. But anyway, they talk about the cows eating the straw. It's like, no, <laughs> that wouldn't be what they would be eating. They would be eating hay. So it was kind of cute when she talked about the um, the ox stink-eyeing baby Jesus because hay would have been in a manger because that would have been how they would have fed them, um, even though it wouldn't normally be used for bedding. Um, and yeah, the baby Jesus would have been preventing the ox from, from eating. So that's I think that's kind of a funny story. Um, but it also this, this reminds me that... Um, a lot of the things we do or know, think we know about biblical stories are things that if you really pay attention, aren't there. It's just kind of become tradition. Like Mary mentions, 
there were no animals mentioned um, in any of the stories about baby Jesus. Yeah, there's a good chance there could have been some of them there. But um, I've also read somewhere that it was unlikely that camels would have been there because camels at that time were not used in that region of the world or something to that effect. Um, another story that um, kind of unrelated to this story that uh, often people talk about is Saul and Paul and how after Saul um, accepted Jesus into his heart, he became Paul. And that's not in the biblical story. Saul is simply the Jewish equivalent of the name Paul, which is a Greek name. And he was actually known by both names. Now the writer uses Paul exclusively after um, Saul basically comes to know Jesus. But he doesn't really change his name. It's just the writer uses emphasizes his Greek name over his Jewish name after that event. So anyway, maybe that's not <laughs> the best uh, thoughts for a Christmas Eve, but um, be happy for this day. And I know it's a difficult day because we're not physically able to do the things we always do for Christmas Eve. Our traditions have been upended, but um, enjoy what you can while you can. And maybe look for new traditions that you can enjoy and new opportunities. Um, connecting with people electronically whom you wouldn't normally get to see at Christmas, as an example. So I hope you enjoy your Christmas Eve. I hope you get a chance to watch the video tonight at 7 p.m. Um, it was, I, I'm, I, I think it turned out far better than I had anticipated it would. So I hope you enjoyed as much as I have so far. Take care, and uh, I'll try to talk to you again tomorrow on Christmas Day.